you were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. So follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. On this podcast, we're all about Christ over culture and obedience over feelings. We're going to talk about all things about being in Jesus, being in love, being in mama mode, and being in the home. Soli Deo Gloria, with love, Jillian. Ooh, girlfriends, are we even ready for this episode? I don't even know if I'm ready for this episode. (laughs) Okay, we're going to be in the book of Proverbs, and this episode is called The Sin of Lazy. Okay, so just reading these verses, getting prepared for this, my heart was beating so fast. (laughs) And I was like, oh, Lord, this is even more serious than I have ever given it credit for. And I know that laziness is a sin. I've seen it in my life. I've seen it give root to all sorts of other destruction in my family, in my home, in my own body. And so I just hope, let's just buckle up. All right. Get a co- here. Here's what I'm going to tell you to do. Get a cozy pillow. Get a beverage. Push pause on me right now. Go get a cozy pillow, a beverage that you like, and go sit somewhere where... <laughs> with your Bible so that you can be prepared for what the Lord is about to say in his word about laziness. Oh, okay. I just know I'm going to be like so convicted. I already am. All right. So we're going to be talking about the sin of lazy in our home, in our bodies, in our relationships. And then in the relationship category, we're going to talk about marriage, mothering, friends, and uh, community. But I don't want this episode to go on for hours, even though we could spend hours talking about this. There is so much in scripture about laziness, and yet it seems like one of those sins that we are numb to that doesn't get talked about often. It's even a little bit like uncomfortable. We go to church and I hate to say this, and I should probably wait to say this part till I get to the laziness in our body category, but there are a lot of people in our churches who are overweight, and I don't even like that word because it's like, what weight? (laughs) What weight is everyone supposed to be? That's different for everybody. So unhealthy. Let's say that the, the sin of laziness or gluttony or having a food idol has contributed to their weight gain, and not everybody who is obese is it's not always due to sin. It's sometimes due to health issues. But let's say that there are people whose obesity or their health issues is due to their sin. So it's uncomfortable. We do not talk about weight in regards to sin. We don't talk about laziness in regards to how we spend our time, really. We tiptoe around the fact that in America, here in the West, and I know a lot of you listeners are don't live in America. Um, hello, Sweden and Canada. I saw where I, we were getting some listeners from. That's so cool. Um, but here in the West, my gosh, we're lazy. We spend most of our time, you know, sitting. We don't walk as much as, you know, we used to hundreds of years ago, obviously. And, um, you know, we're We go to the store and buy our food. Not everybody has a homestead or is farming themselves or cultivating their own um, food. And so these topics are just kind of just, you know, brushed under the rug. We don't want to touch those things because it's too personal. It's offensive to call out somebody on their sin if it's um, talking also about their appearance, like their weight, which I get because if you're new to this podcast, girl, I... (laughs) I myself am, I think, what what did I weigh last week, guys? 248. Do you guys like how I ask you questions like you can answer me? 
<laughs> you cannot answer me. But anyways, um, yeah, so I am 5'4", and my obesity is due to my years of laziness and gluttony, and having a food idol, and so I know all about (laughs) tiptoeing around this topic because it's uncomfortable, and it makes you feel like you're a monster, like, (laughs) you know, if you're an obese woman in our society, you're kind of like, unless you're like a plus-size curvy model, you're looked on as, yeah, lazy, but in the church, it's not talked about, Um, so We're going to jump in to all these things that the Bible talks about laziness. And some of these verses, maybe you're going to be like, I've never even heard that before. And I, my point of all of what I just said (laughs) for the last three minutes is to say that this is a topic that the church, the body of Christ should be tackling more. We should be talking about laziness because it really does lead to destruction. So if you have your Bibles, and I pray you do, please open to Proverbs. And let me pray really fast, and then we will get into the Word. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this podcast. Thank you for the platform that you've given me to go to your word and to connect with my sisters in Christ um, all throughout the world. Lord, that is amazing. Technology is amazing. And when we use it for your glory, Father, it is so good. And I just pray, Lord, that we will all humble ourselves right now and remove ourselves from our culture, from our society, what we maybe grew up thinking was right or wrong, and that we just humble our spirits And just say, yes, Lord, I'm going to listen to your word, to what you say plainly in scripture. And I will submit to it and I will obey it. And if I don't like it, I will pray that you will change my heart to love it. Thank you for each and every woman who is listening to this podcast. I pray for them right now, wherever they're at. I love them. I can't wait to be in eternity with them but mostly with you because it's all about you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Okay, let's jump in. All right, Ezekiel 16.49. You don't have to turn there. I'll just read it to you. Sodom's sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness, while the poor and needy suffered outside the door. Okay, so let's zoom in to that verse. We most, I'm not gonna assume that you know every Bible story. And I'm not also going to spend time going into Sodom and Gomorrah, but it is definitely a story to read. Um, Sodom and Gomorrah was so evil and wicked that God destroyed the entire city except for one family and the angels that the Lord sent in to get Lot and his family had to drag them out. And then the one command where they say, don't look back. Lot's wife looked back and she was turned into a pillar of salt. This was a wicked, wicked place to live. Now, a lot of people say America is 10,000 times worse. All I know is if Sodom sins were pride, gluttony, and laziness, America fits right in. We fit right in with our flesh, (laughs) Now, not everybody deals with this sin. So I don't want to point fingers on at everybody listening and saying you struggle with glut- gluttony in your laziness with your food. But maybe there is an aspect of laziness that we'll talk about. You know, we're going to talk about the home, our bodies, relationships. Maybe there is an aspect, okay? But please don't feel like I'm condemning you. You're, and you're like, I don't even deal with that. <laughs> um But America as a whole, we are definitely prideful. We definitely have an issue with gluttony. We are all about more, 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 more. And laziness, for sure. Proverbs 19.24, a lazy man buries his hand in the bowl and will not so much as bring it to his mouth again. (laughs) I don't know why that kind of makes me laugh. My first question was, well, what's in the bowl? (laughs) Because if you got some chocolate in that bowl, I will never be too lazy to put it in my mouth. (laughs) See, gluttony. 
All right, Proverbs 21, 25. The desire of the lazy man kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. Ecclesiastes 10, 18. Laziness leads to a sagging roof. Idleness leads to a leaky house. I mean, these are, these are really um, talking about how, of course, if you are not, um, you're going to reap what you sow, basically. You're lazy, you don't eat. The Bible says that very clearly as well. You're going to lead you and your family to destruction. It doesn't literally mean that, well, maybe it means that, but <laughs> in some scenarios, but it doesn't literally mean like, oh, I'm lazy. Oh, there's consequence. My house is leaking. It just means like it, you're, it's going to lead to destruction. It's going to lead, lead to problems. It's not protected. It's not a shelter. People who work hard, don't fear the future, which leads us right into our best friend in scripture, Proverbs 31 woman, verses 25 and 27. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instructions with kindness. She carefully watches everything in her household and suffers nothing from laziness. This woman is not idle. She gets up before her family. Sometimes she stays up at night longer. They're already asleep. So she's providing. So let's just, you know, the point is God takes laziness very seriously. Okay. And we need to as well. It leads to destruction. Proverbs 15, 19, the path of lazy people is like a thorny hedge, but the road of decent people is an open highway. Proverbs 26, 14 to 16, like a door on its hinges, a lazy man turns back and forth on his bed. Lazy people are too lazy to lift the food from their plate to their mouth. Lazy people think they are seven times smarter than the people who really have good sense. What translation is that? <laughs> I was reading that. And I don't know if you could hear me, but I was like, uh, what am I reading right now? Let's go to the, to my Bible. It says, as a door turns on its hinges, so a sluggard turns on his bed. So he's not getting good sleep. A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He's too, oh, that's that one. <laughs> What's in the bowl? A sluggard buries his hand in the dish. He's too lazy to bring it back to his mouth. A sluggard is wiser in his own eyes than seven people who answer discreetly. Okay, this must be like the message that I just read. <laughs> lazy people think they are seven times smarter than the people who really do have good sense. There you go. Um, Proverbs 18, 9. Whoever is lazy regarding his work is also a brother to the master of destruction. Woo, that is strong. Let's go. To my version of the Bible, my, this translation says, one who is slack in his work is brother to the one who destroys. <sighs> that is serious. That re- I mean, truly, that is serious. So laziness. First, let's talk about the sin of laziness in our homes. Girlfriends, I could have been the poster child woman for being a lazy wife. I've been married for almost 14 years and I spent most of my marriage being lazy. Lazy, 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 lazy. I would make excuses like, well, my mom never taught me how to clean. Now, I have an amazing mother, <laughs> a very godly mother, but she worked from the away from the home and cleaning was not her forte. And no, we ate out all the time. We were that family. We didn't have home cooked meals. I was never taught how to do laundry. Even in college, my girlfriends, my roommates did my laundry for me. No, I'm not kidding. And then when I got married, my husband <laughs> had to write the instructions in our laundry room to tell me how to do the laundry. That is, (laughs) oh boy, which is crazy because my children have been doing laundry for like three years. My oldest daughter is 12. She's been doing her own laundry for, yeah, since she was like nine. So it's crazy to me that I was 20 something before I ever learned how to do laundry on my own. But I would make excuses. 
you can say, well, that's a good excuse. You didn't know. No, I should have learned. (laughs) I should have taken responsibility and not thought it was cute to be like, I'm just not a housewife. Ugh, I just wasn't born for that. I was created to do different stuff. <laughs> like That's the things I would say. Instead of buckling down and saying, yeah, maybe I didn't grow up in that home, but I know the kind of wife that my husband, t- you know, made it very clear in premarital counseling and while we were dating of what he wanted in a wife. And he, my husband is very traditional. He wants to come home to that home-cooked meal. And as a woman who's always loved old vintage movies, I, I've always loved that idea, but I was lazy when it actually came to action. So my laziness in the home did create a ton of problems. I was never a neglectful mother, but I definitely neglected our home. And there were, t- uh, there were certain periods that I can remember where our home was not filthy necessarily, but it was definitely disorganized, chaotic. It did not, um, it wasn't inviting. No one wanted to be there. I didn't even want to be there. I don't even know how my kids were functioning. I mean, gosh, just disorder everywhere. Um, and then my husband would have to pick up the slack. He would go to work and come home and yeah, the dishes hadn't been done. He actually sometimes, no joke, When my kids were a little bit older and they weren't in toddler stage anymore, he would leave me and go to work and I was sitting on the couch and then he would come home because I would be too lazy to cook for all of us. He would leave work, come home to bring us like Taco Bell or something. I was still in that same spot and then he would go back to work and then come home and I was still in that same spot and I probably only moved to, you know, take care of the girls here and there and go to the bathroom. But the trash of our lunch was still there. And then, like, he would have to bring home fast food because, again, I was too lazy. Except to, like, probably make mac and cheese for my children. I mean, it's it's shameful. I'm not proud of this. Like, I've repented of all of it. I'm thankful my children were little that they're not going to have those memories. And, like, the memories that they are going to have are, you know, recently and now where their mother isn't that those things anymore, aren't those things anymore. God has totally cleansed me of my unrighteousness, not so that I can boast and say, y'all, I am a house wife. I, <laughs> y'all need to be just like me. No, we need to be like Christ. I will not boast in self. The only reason that I have things in order right now is because of Jesus Christ and because I know what my sin did to my family. And so ladies, let me please encourage you, work hard unto the Lord. Let's talk about that. Colossians 3.23, whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord, not for human masters. Ecclesiastes 9.10, whatever your hands finds to do, do it with all your might. We need to be women, whether you are a career mom or you're a stay-at-home mom. I've done the career mom thing. I had three foster children on top of that, and I was the minister's wife. And I really, at that time, had to be on top of things because we had social workers coming in and out of our home. You have to have your house clean. So I was kind of forced to start these cleaning habits because I had these foster kids. Um, so I know what it's like to take care of a home, have a ministry, have a full-time job. I ran a newspaper, guys. like, And you know, be a mom and a wife. I know what that life is like. You can do it, but it is going to take sacrifice and it is going to hurt. It's like stretching muscles that you haven't used for a while. You haven't been cleaning. You're not into organizing. You know, you, you maybe clean deep clean, like once every six months, (laughs) it is going to, it's not going to feel good the first times you do it. But the more you get on top of these things, like the household chores, meal planning, making sure that your husband is coming home, not to a lazy wife, but to a wife who is on top of her home. There's that verse in Proverbs that says, you know, like the, a woman like tears her own home down with her own hands, the foolish wife. We, that was me. We cannot be that wife and glorify God. It does not work. Titus 2 says that we need to be busy in our homes. 
we are supposed to be cultivating these healthy, warm environments for our children to grow and mature and make mistakes and learn about God in and for our husbands to leave their daily jobs that are stressful and, you know, full of problems or whatever and come home to peace, to warmth, to cleanliness, to let them relax not to have more anxiety and stress and more chores and stuff placed on them because we're not doing our jobs. So we need to make a plan. I tell you girls on social media, like if you, if you need to take a day or a weekend, if you have girlfriends or a family member who can take your children for a little bit of time get a babysitter or, you know, get someone to watch your kids. If not, put a movie on for the kids. It's not going to hurt them. Make the kids safe and occupied. (laughs) Basically is what I'm saying. And deep clean your house. Go to room to room and get it to square one cleanliness. And once you do that and you throw things away, don't hold on to things that you don't need or that you don't love. Throw it away. Organize. Get your house to like levels, like square one, clean. And then throughout the week, you do a jobs in each rooms, not in one day, but throughout the week. So you have seven days to upkeep the cleanliness of your home. And like we do, um, we call it, you know, the kitchen, the kitchen is open, the kitchen is closed. So in the mornings, you know, we don't just allow our children to just go eat without asking us, you know, for choking reasons and for health reasons because especially my little one she will snack and snack and snack (laughs) unless someone tells her to stop so in the mornings you know I'll go get my coffee and I'll say you know the kitchen's open we'll get breakfast whatever and then at night time once the dishes are done I always tell you guys clear the sink make sure your kitchen is clean for the next morning for breakfast then the kitchen is closed you can get water but close your kitchen every night which again means the floors are swept, the trash is either taken out or it's not overflowing, the counters are cleared, things have been put back in their proper space, and your kitchen sink is empty. So either the dishes are being run in the dishwasher or your dishwasher is empty. Okay, so that is, that is the goal. <laughs> and I promise it's going to make your mornings so much better. And if you're saying, I don't have time, to keep my house clean, then I'm going to lovingly say, even without knowing what you're doing, that you're too busy. If you are a wife and a mother and you cannot contribute to keeping your home clean, you're too busy with other stuff. Even if that stuff seems like good stuff, like church ministry activities or activities for your children, your home is like your hub base. It has to be in order for these other things to thrive, for you to thrive, not for self, but for the glory of God. Okay. So like we have to get our homes in order. It's just like with church government or church um, leadership. Elders need to have their families to be believers. And how can they run a congregation if they can't even have their own home in order? That's scripture. It's kind of the same things. How are we pouring into these church activities or being there for our kids in sports or whatever other activities you have them in if your home base is not running well? And again, and not again, I don't think I've said this. We're not trying to be perfect, okay? That's never going to happen until we're glorified with Christ. But it is about doing what you need to do And do it to your best ability for God's glory. It's about saying no to idleness. It's saying no to laziness, to selfishness. You're going to have to start making serious changes. For me, I used to make also the excuses that I was a night owl. Well, I don't get up in the morning, Jacob, because you, when you married me, you knew that I was a night owl. Well, guess what, Miss Night Owl? (laughs) You need to go to sleep. (laughs) I've had to really grow to start going to bed earlier and earlier because it just doesn't work. 
It does not work to stay up till two in the morning and then be up before my children. It does not work because I'm exhausted. I have to go to bed on time. It is selfish of us. It is sinful of us to entertain ourselves throughout the night and then be tired and lazy in the mornings. We have to say no to our flesh. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as working for the Lord. I just had this image in my head. <laughs> like, ooh, if the, if the Lord was at my house and I was like, we were doing like a cleaning project, ooh, I would be the, like the master cleaner. <laughs> I'd be like, Lord, look at me clean. <laughs> it's like that. Like, not that we're trying to impress him, like to earn things from him, but we want to worship him with our best. He deserves all of our best. And God takes that stuff seriously. We just learned about Cain and Abel. We were going over the story in Bible time during homeschool. And, you know, Cain did not give the Lord his best. And look what happened. Abel gave God his best. We, and it mattered. It matters to the Lord. So, y'all, when we work, we need to work into the Lord. Again, not to gain favor or to gain things from him. His, it doesn't work that way. We don't, you know, get his love based on works, but we do honor him. And God, so many times in the Bible, honors people who serve him wholeheartedly. And that verse is used over and over for kings and for prophets and for all these people in the Old Testament who worked unto the Lord, who lived their lives unto the Lord wholeheartedly. So that's what we need to do in our homes. In our bodies. <sighs> All right. <laughs> I'm not trying to be hypocritical and telling you things that I'm not doing myself. I have not mastered my struggle with food. I am still striving, kind of like beating your body into submission. I'm still working on it (laughs) daily because I have to eat. And so many times I want to eat things that I know are not good for my body. Now, food is amoral. It's not bad or good, but God has given us discernment and wisdom to know that a Snickers bar could make our tummies upset. That sugar is not necessarily, it's not natural. It's not good for your body. It's not going to give you fuel And an apple, you know, would. Now, are you wrong or sinful to eat the Snickers over the apple? Absolutely not. You have the freedom in Christ to eat that Snickers bar. And you have the freedom to eat it like you're in a music video. (laughs) And like you were grumpy. And then you took a bite. And then you were satisfied. Okay, like we're not trying to be legalistic here. But you do have discernment. If your tummy gets sick after eating tons of chocolate, you know, maybe don't eat the chocolate. We know that certain things are good for our bodies and certain things are not. But sometimes we're too lazy to make those hard choices to say no to the Snickers and yes to the salad. And we really need to be on top of this. I had so many ladies talk about, Oh, you're the first person I've ever heard talk about food idols. Well, it needs to be talked about more. And I'm not the first. We're reading this book by this lady that obviously she wrote it a couple years ago. It's called Broken Bread. And she's tackling this issue. So I'm so thankful that there are women out there who are talking about this issue. Because I do feel like in the church, it's hush-hush. We have our potlucks. And we bring like the most fattening foods. And we all fill up our little white plastic plates and we go up for seconds and it's fine that's not sinfulness but if it's gluttony it is and we don't want to tell people like hey are you okay like we don't want to we don't want to confront our brothers and sisters in Christ on these issues because it's too close to home it's too personal we talk about porn all day but we don't talk about the sin of gluttony or being obese because you have turned to food instead of Christ And there is a physical consequence to that sometimes. And I'm not trying to be hypocritical. Back in the first beginning of the year, I was knocking on 300 pounds. And I had to repent. Not of being fat. (laughs) 
but of going to food all these years, of making myself God in my life, of choosing binging, of choosing bulimia, of choosing never working out to obsessively working out like I was my idol, obsessing over my appearance, over my weight, over, you know, the food I eat, what I am eating, not eating calories, blah, blah, blah. blah. It was just like, I was who I thought about most. I was God myself. And I was too lazy to really look in scripture and see what God has already told us. He's laid it out in his word. We need to deny self and be hidden in Christ. And laziness again is very serious. And so once I did that, I started doing intermittent fasting because it gave me some structure for self-control. And, you know, I've lost weight. But I'm still working on it. And so I'm speaking to you as a sister in Christ who weighs 248 pounds at 5'4". And I'm speaking to myself on all these issues. But ladies, we need to be wise with how we're treating our bodies. It's so easy to not work out. It's so easy to literally not ever stretch our muscles. But we're wearing down our bodies because we're not being active. Because we are literally couch potatoes. And then we're eating potato chips. (laughs) We need to be treating our temples with respect. And it doesn't mean that if you are skinny or you look appearance-wise healthy that you don't also struggle with these things. You can't look at someone and know if they struggle or they're dealing with the sin of laziness or even gluttony. I got a girlfriend. Her and I can eat the same food. The same food. But I'll put on 10 pounds and she'll lose five. (laughs) Everybody's bodies are different. So you can't look at someone and always know what you know, sin they're dealing with. But the point is, with our bodies, we need to work them with all of our heart unto the Lord. We know that certain foods are better than other foods and we need to stop being lazy and get in the kitchen, stop eating out at restaurants that we know are bad for us and get in the kitchen and cook. You don't know how to cook? Let's learn to cook. I never thought I would be able to be a cook ever but I got blue apron and I started there and I started learning how to make these recipes and now I cook all the time and we don't even have blue apron anymore and I love it God has bestowed unto me a love for homemaking and being a housewife and being domestic which is crazy if you've known me in the past because I was like like even though I love like the 1950s housewife like aesthetic I was not about to do the work (laughs) lazy was I and now I love it and that desire that God has given me I equate to that verse that says when you delight in the Lord he gives you the desires of your heart he gave me a desire that delights him he is delighted when he sees me spring out of bed and even if I'm tired I go to the word And I say, okay, God, help me be strong today to do the dishes, to clean for my family, to cook for them, to get through homeschool, to read the Bible with my children, to not choose myself. Yes, my flesh wants to sit down on the couch, not even on the couch, in my bed with my pajamas and watch TLC trash shows and eat Chinese food. (laughs) That's what I want. But that flesh has to be denied and killed and it has to be renewed with the spirit. And ladies, I don't always get out of bed springy and like a, a bunny hopping around all happy <laughs> about being a housewife and doing these things. But I will tell you that it has happened more and more and more that I am getting up with like a joy to do these things. And it is because God has given me those desires. But I continually pray for them. And submitted and obeyed even when I didn't want to. That's why this podcast, we talk about obedience over feelings. We don't feel like working out. We don't feel like getting a walk-in. We don't feel like cooking. We want to order pizza. But we need to be obedient. Is that what's best? Is that what's, is that what's best for our finances? Is that what's best for our respecting our husbands? 
Or are we going to continually tell our husbands to go get us fast food because we're too lazy to cook? Do we have to tell our husbands, hey, babe, I need to go to Target and get new jeans because I've put on 30 pounds because I've been too lazy to take care of my body? Are we bestowing laziness onto our children? Are we showing them laziness and resulting in them too being lazy? We got to cut this sin. And again, this is hard because I can just, I can feel it. Oh, you know, perfectionism, legalism. No, obedience, submission, working unto the Lord, being busy at home, respecting our husbands, instructing our children, laughing at the future. I want those things. And again, it's about renewing our minds with the word, stepping outside of culture, stepping outside of what society says is right and getting in the word. God, what do you want? You don't sit there and listen for an audible voice. It's not going to (laughs) happen. He's already given us everything right there in your Bible. You know, and people are like, there's no manual for how to be a wife. There's a manual for how to be a mother. Yes, there is. It's called the Bible. Read it. And I say that with this compassion because I wish I could go back in time and slap myself. Oh my gosh. I would, I would just beat myself up. <laughs> if I could go back in time, I would beat myself up and be like, you are the most selfish, self-centered, like lukewarm, whitewashed tomb of a woman. <laughs> <laughs> like not happy with myself and how I was so haughty. You know, I did that podcast last week about being the haughty horror that turned into a humbled homemaker. I would love to slap the haughtiness out of myself years ago, but God has granted me repentance. He disciplined me. It turned into righteousness and I'm working through it and I will continually be sanctified and I fall and I have to repent and uh, it's a whole thing. Okay. So hopefully I made that point you know, using the word, our, t- our bodies are the temples of the Lord. We need to treat them well. We need to not be lazy. We need to do what we know we need to do. Drink water, get some exercise in. We don't have to be crazy, but we could walk 20 minutes in the day. We can make sure that we're drinking water over Coke or coffee. We can say no to the ice cream and yes to like a banana. We can not be lazy with our bodies and our health. We can make our choices. All right. In our relationships. Okay. Let's start off with marriage. Are you a lazy wife? I did a blog post um, a couple weeks ago about how it's sin to withhold sex on purpose from your husband. Um, I just ask you to read it. It is not about being a sex slave. <laughs> It's not about anything like that. It is simply saying don't use sex as a weapon. Don't withhold it as a punishment from your husband. There's a lot to it. Um, The scripture tells us that we need to think of others more highly than we think of ourselves. And this is true for our marriages. Our husbands need to be more important than how we see ourselves. And so many of us are lazy. We, We want the husband to initiate sex all the time. Wives... We should also be showing our husbands that we desire them. When's the last time you just went and kissed your husband? Not like a cheek kiss or like a pop kiss, but I mean like made out kissed your man. He wants to feel desired. And we are so lazy. Go get your man. (laughs) I know every marriage is not perfect. And there's a lot, and and they wouldn't be. So I'm not saying some are. I'm just like, you know, quote, quote, perfect. That there are, you know, real hard issues going on in a lot of your marriages. I know because so many of you tell me. And I know because I've lived it. But I really want us to step outside and stop looking at what our husbands do or don't do. And look at what God has told us to do. There's no contingency on wife obedience. God does not say, submit to your husband as unto the Lord, like the church does to Jesus, only if he's loving you the way Jesus loves the church. Nope, doesn't say that. It just says submit to him in everything. Now, of course, we do not submit to our husbands in sinfulness. 
that's a podcast episode for another day. But are we being lazy with our husbands? Don't think about what he's doing or not doing. Think about you. Are you being lazy? Does he trust you? Does he go to work knowing that things at home are being taken care of? Or does he know that when he comes home, there's going to be a fight? There's going to be an argument? He's going to have to clean. He's going to have to take care of the kids. He might have to take care of you. Are we being lazy in our relationships? Are we being a helpmeet? Or are we hurting him? There's that very powerful, powerful verse in Proverbs about, you know, a wife being a crown to her husband or she is wrought in his very bones. Which one are we, ladies? Are we helping or are we hurting him? And what can we do to change that if you are the cancer in his bones? In mothering, are you being a lazy mama? Are you teaching your children about the Lord? Or are you letting church do it? Are you relying on Sunday school and youth group to teach your children theology? You know that's your job. It's not the church's responsibility. It's not the school's responsibility. It's your responsibility. Where are they getting their Bible knowledge primarily from? Are you being lazy? What about reading with your babies? Are you leaving that again up to the school or to the kids themselves or to Hooked on Phonics or YouTube? Or are you putting down what you want to do and what you feel like needs to be done And reading with your kids. Reading is so important. Are you playing with your kids? Or are they constantly playing with each other by themselves or with electronics? Will they have memories of mama putting down her phone and playing with them? Are they well kept? Are you teaching them good hygiene or are you being lazy? These are things only you can answer. In relationships with friends, are we upset that our friends aren't treating us well, but we ourselves are not treating them the way we would want to be treated? Are you upset that your friend doesn't call you, but you also don't call them and check up on them? Are you being lazy in your friendships? Do you care about your sisters in Christ? Are you praying for them? That's the prayer thing I should have totally spoke on with marriage and mothering because that is huge. Are we being lazy in our prayer lives? If you're not praying for your husband and your babies, I don't know who is. And I'm working on that too. And not just like saying a prayer like, Lord, please be with Jacob, but like really praying for my man, covering him in prayer and my children. Are we being lazy in prayer? In the community, are we being lazy? Are we focused on the gospel at all? Are we worried about our neighbors that they very well may be going to hell? And I will tell you guys, I have been praying and I will please pray for me because, oh, we have new neighbors and they put out their uh, LGBTQ plus flag and I haven't met them yet. And I have been praying for the strength to bring over a little care package and introduce myself. And I'm fearful because this, you know, it's. I, it's hard. I'm kind of an introvert. It's hard for me just to meet new people like that. Even though you may not think that that would be true about me, it is. Um, but I can't be lazy. We as Christians cannot be lazy. We have 
to be serious about the gospel and the fact that these people are dying all around us. They're like the walking dead. I have a whole episode of podcast episode right here on this podcast called The Walking Dead. We literally have dead people spiritually walking all around us. And are we just consumed with our lives and ourselves that we don't even think about telling them about Jesus? We just keep Christ to ourselves and trust me. I'm talking to myself because I should have already been to their house, introducing myself and meeting them and loving on them. Shame on me. And yes, shame. I have Christians who say not shame. There's no condemnation for Christ. There is shame in our sin that we need to bring before the Lord. And yes, when we're repentant, he takes it and there is no more condemnation. But shame on me for not going over already and and sitting there and continually praying about something that I know God's already told me to do. He's told me to be brave, to have courage that he's already gone before me. And yet I care too much about my flesh and being embarrassed and being shy. Do I care more about myself or their spiritual, eternal destiny? Do I care about preaching the gospel to people, teaching people the gospel? Are we being lazy in our churches and communities? Ladies, Are we being lazy in our churches when there are women that you don't know? Are you expecting them to come introduce themselves to you? Or are you saying, I'm not going to be lazy and I'm going to go talk to them? We are so selfish. I do it too. We are so selfish. We have got to repent. We are so focused on ourselves. Are we being lazy with Christ? I don't know about you, but I feel really like I'm on the verge of like a tear fest. I can feel it because I know how guilty I am of this. We need to be obedient women, not women of the world, not women of modern Christianity, which is all about self-love and ridiculousness and foolishness. People need the gospel. Our husbands need their helpmates. Our children need their mother to be their biblical instructors. Yes, the head, the head is, our, is the father, is your husband. And he should be, oh, sorry, I just burped. He, <laughs> he should ultimately be leading your family in Christ. But, you know, Paul equates Timothy's instructions to his mother and his grandmother. And I love that. We are supposed to be teaching our children about the Lord. And are we being lazy with all of it? All I know is that after I push stop and I post this on line for all of you guys to listen to. I will be in prayer myself and I will be looking into my mirror, which is the word of God. And it's your mirror too. And asking God reveal to me where I have been so lazy, Lord. And it may feel overwhelming. You may be like, I, I checked the lazy box on every one of these things you said, sister, repent and know with boldness that his grace cleanses you of all, not some, all unrighteousness. And you continually go to the word of God every day and you get in prayer and you start producing the fruit of the spirit. You don't, you don't do the works to then get Christ in grace. No, it is a, it is the result of the grace he gives you freely. It is a gift. Ephesians says it is a gift to you. You've done nothing to deserve it. But he gives it to you because he loves us. His love is wide and deep. It's so wide and so deep. We cannot measure it. Give it to God. Repent. Repent of each one of these things that you're like, yes, that's me, Lord. Repentance is agreement. Yes, I have sinned, Lord. I have sinned in this area or all these areas. I agree with you. That this is sin and I am wrong and I need you and only you can cleanse me. 
And then you discipline, the discipline, guys. You get in the word and you get on your knees every day and you watch what happens. God has changed my marriage dramatically. He's changed me as a woman. I mean, dramatically. And I do not boast in self. I boast in Christ. Because when I do things my way, it's destruction, it's sin, it's evil, it's wickedness, it's depravity. When I humble myself and I submit, it turns into righteousness and holiness And it's all glory to God. The same spirit that rose, rose, raised, risen (laughs) Jesus from the dead is who lives inside us as Christian women. We have the Holy Spirit inside us to help us, to comfort us, to guide us. Jesus is continually interceding for us. That's what the Bible says. Don't we see? The victory's already been won. We just need to now obey because we love him. And we know that his way is the right way. And laziness, again, will only lead you down the wrong way. I love you. I'll be praying for you too. And pray for me as well, please. Let's humble ourselves. Let's go to the word. Convict us, Lord. Search our hearts, O God. Cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And please sanctify us in your holy, holy, holiness. I'll see you guys next week for a new episode.